All right, guys, today we're gonna to be scanning dark parts with the EinScan HX using the laser mode. Now, this prevents the need for any kind of spray or coating on dark or reflective parts because it's using the lasers with higher intensity to actually get good reflections back and generate the data. So we're just gonna show you how this thing works in laser mode. One important note is with laser mode, you do actually have to use markers of some sort. Now you don't have to put markers on the part for it to work. There's a couple different methods I'll show you. So let's get started. So we're going to start by opening up XScan HX and selecting laser mode with the scanner plugged in. So there's a couple different ways I can use markers. I can either put markers on the part or on the surface around the part. Any sort of flat surface makes it really easy to cut out all that extra data and it'll get the actual shape of the part without any extra effort. Uh, for example, if you're traveling, the HX comes with this travel case and you actually put markers on the case and then just set your object right there and it works great. Great. Another option is to get a Lazy Susan and actually paint it black and put markers all over it. This is another great option since the HX doesn't actually come with an automated turntable function. Now, another option that I like is these little marker pyramids, which should be available on the website now at visionminer.com. And I can just take these and they're just little pyramids that have markers on them. And I can spread them around my work area. And now it will use these as the markers and I don't have to worry about sticking markers down everywhere and peeling them off the parts of this table or anything later. That's really, really good. And as a side note, we do sell all these scanners on our website. We've got a large variety for small parts, big parts, light parts, dark parts, metal parts, you name it. So if you're looking for 3D scanning, be sure to hit us up at visionminer.com. We're here to help. All right, so today we're gonna to be scanning this mold. Now this is carbon fiber nylon, which works great for a lot of different types of vacuum forming, vacuum pressing, and it can be used in really high temperature environments that need a lot of rigidity over and over and over. So we're just gonna use this as an example today because it's dark using a normal structured light scanner won't really work too well because it can't reflect the light back. But with the lasers on the HX, that's really not an issue. So to set up my workspace, I'm just going to use these little pyramidal markers, place them around the object. This should be more than enough. I'm going to get them about three fingers apart. They call it the Boy Scout rule. If your markers are about that far apart, two to three inches apart in general, that's what allows it to see it all and know where it's at so it's getting accurate scan data. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new project group and I'm gonna name this HX Mold Scan. I'm just gonna create that, you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna do a high detail scan. Now, on this initial page, you've got low detail, which is one millimeter point spacing, medium detail at half a millimeter, High detail is 0.2, but this will go all the way down to 0.05 millimeters for really, really high accuracy and high resolution scans. Now, one thing to note is that will take up a lot more memory and it will take a little bit more time to scan because you're literally gathering millions and millions of tiny points. For most applications like reverse engineering a part, one millimeter is frankly good enough. So we're just gonna start with medium detail at 0.5 millimeter spacing and it creates your new project. Now the first thing that I like to do is actually scan and optimize the marker position. So the first thing we're going to do is hit scan markers right here. This is a separate mode and then I'm just going to, <clears throat> I can either press the button up in the upper right corner or I can use the button on the actual scanner. First time I hit it, it goes into preview mode. So now you can see it's moving around, it sees the scanners, and I'm gonna hit it again, and it's actually gonna start recording the location of those markers. I'm gonna make sure to get all my angles here. I don't have to go too crazy. So once it has enough, it's got enough. And then after we've done the markers, I just hit markers optimization. So once I do markers optimization, now we're done with the markers and I can go back to scanning my point cloud. Now there's different modes here. We've got normal, reflective, or black, which are really just presets of the data and the uh, brightness settings. So for this particular part, I'm gonna do black because it's a not really reflective, but totally dark part. So now I can just pick up my scanner again, hit the button, goes into preview mode. Now you can see we've got all these blue lasers going around. If you can see that on our table, it's doing a grid of lasers to get the cross section and sort of the curvatures of whatever you're scanning. 
and it's already picking up all the markers, so we don't have to worry about it being a line. So now I'll hit the button again, and that's now gathering data. So I can go around. I could scan my whole part right now, but I'll show you a little secret trick. If I just pause, then I can save a lot of computer memory. And I'm going to create a cutting plane so that we're not scanning the actual table and gathering millions of points of the table, which has nothing to do with my object, and I just don't want them. And that can overload memory. So to get rid of that, so I'm not taking in that data, I can either fit by a point cloud, or I can create a straight line, or I can go by markers. Now, if I had markers on the actual surface, I could select three of them, it would make a plane, and bam, we're done. Okay, so I'm gonna do it using a fitting the point cloud, where I'm actually gonna just select part of the table. I'm gonna use the lasso tool down here, hold shift, and just select part of the table. Now, I'm gonna create a plane based off that, and as you can see, it just created a flat plane along with those point clouds. Now, I do have to move it up a little bit, so I'm gonna try hitting that up button, but that goes up too far. So what I like to do is go by 0.1 millimeter increments, and now everything is pink, but I think I can go another 0.05, and there we go, it cut out a little more of that data. So I'm gonna hit apply. Now that gets rid of all the data from the table. And before I clean this up, I'm just gonna continue my scan by hitting the button again. We got the preview, nothing on this table has moved, the markers are in the same spot, so I'm just gonna keep gathering data. Now you notice when I'm scanning, I'm actually holding it at different angles. I can go this way, I can go that way, and it is based on the stereoscopic view. It's like two eyeballs coming out. So if you have a little nook or a crevice that you can't see down with both cameras, it won't do too great of a job getting that. But everything else, it actually does pretty darn well. And in real time, I'm getting this other side here. And I basically just, it's almost like painting with a paintbrush. I'm just getting all this, you know, it's picking up the background a little bit, but that's okay. All right, I think I've got enough data. So let me hop back in here. Now, we've got all our markers and all this other junk, but it's really easy to get rid of all the extra data. I'm just gonna select the polygon selection tool, hold shift, click, 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 and four clicks, five clicks. Now I've got that selected and I'll go invert, so I have everything else selected, and delete selected data. Now I could come in here too, you have a paintbrush tool, I can just hold shift and paint over that data, that data, maybe a little bit of that data hanging out, but most of this will actually get taken out automatically, so I'm going to delete selected data and apply edit. Now you're applying the edit to the point cloud, not to a mesh or anything else like that yet, so here we go, we've got our part. Looks like I could get a little bit more on this side, but since it's totally a flat side, that's really unnecessary. I don't need to know that this is a perfectly flat side because I'm gonna take this and reverse engineer it or make a cleaned up STL and Geomagic Essentials as part of the red bundle, then I literally just don't need that data. So, I'll go around here, and if we look at the part, this is also a flat edge with a slight curve. So I really don't need to do any, any cleanup on this. I am just going to go generate point clouds. And then I'm going to turn my part on its side. Now, why would I turn my part on its side instead of upside down? Because realistically, I just want to get the flat bottom and have a little bit of the features for it to align to on the side or on the top. And then we'll have the top and the bottom and we'll align that together into one solid mesh. So, from here, I'm gonna go into Project Group. I'm gonna create a new project, and that makes the other project disappear. Okay, so this time, I'm gonna show you what it's like if I don't pre-optimize the markers. It's really not that necessary uh, with small parts like this. So I'm just gonna stay in Point Cloud, and I'm gonna grab my scanner, and hit Preview, so I can see it's picking up all the different markers. Now one thing to take note of is that the light on the back of the scanner and this bar on the left side is telling me if I'm too far or too close from the object I'm scanning. So right here, if I get really close, notice it goes all the way down to red, and if I go too far, it'll go up to blue. And the corresponding color shows up on the scanner. So I don't have to be looking at the screen, but something to note. So I'm just gonna hit go, and it's gonna record those markers. I'm gonna get a little bit of the top side, 
I'm gonna come around, make sure I got the flat bottom side. And I'm just gonna go around here so we have a nice amount of data. Get a little bit of this side over here. And bada bing, bada boom. Hit the button again. And now I'm gonna modify and edit the point cloud. So here, I'm gonna do the same thing again. Cutting plane, fitting point cloud. I'm gonna just brush on this area, why not? Create plane, all right. I'm gonna move it up in 0.1 millimeter increments. Let's do a 0.05. Let's do another 0.05 just because we can. All right, I'm gonna apply that there. Now, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna use the polygon selection tool again, hold shift, click a couple times, select my actual part, and then invert the selection and click del delete selected data. Okay, so now my part's pretty cleaned up. I don't see a ton of extra floating points or anything around, but I got enough data over here to align with. So I'm gonna hit apply edit, and now I'm gonna go into aligning the two scans. Super easy to do. I'm gonna hit generate point clouds, and now we have this little button right here called align, and that's gonna, I'll just click on that, and then I select by manual, by feature, or by markers. Let's see if it gets it by feature. Why not? Let's try it. I'm just gonna select both my scans, hit apply, and see if it gets it right. Oh my gosh, it worked perfect. Just about perfect. So I've got my bottom surface, everything lined up great, and we're done. That's literally it. Uh, and then you can also do it by markers, but that's really only gonna work if your part has markers on it. All right, so I hit next, and I can, exit at this point and now we're ready to go and actually mesh the model so I can save my scan data here if I want so we have all the point clouds forever uh, but then I just go ahead and go mesh and this is where I'm going to make a watertight or unwatertight mesh STL OBJ 3MF CAD file whatever you want uh, this is the window to do it and a lot of the times these mesh optimizations actually do a great job on their stock settings. But I'm gonna select watertight so we just get a printable STL, high quality, remove small floating parts. If I do recommended parameters, it gives me uh, uh, 20 million triangles. Frankly, we can get away with probably 100,000 triangles on this STL. So I'm gonna go 100,000. Okay, and I'm gonna hit apply. Now this is gonna give us a preview of what our STL is gonna look like. It's gonna crunch those numbers and bada bing, bada boom, we've got a nice solid body mesh, as we can see here. Now, once I confirm, there's other options like smoothing and mesh optimization or simplification. I can take this down, I can see my polygons and the file size of the STLs or OBJs. And if I need it smaller or wanna go a little more detail, I can apply all that here. Texture is actually when you use the color scanning feature, this will do full color scanning, uh, removing small floating parts. We don't really have any issues with that. So not a big deal and smoothing. Let's just see what that does. I'm gonna crank it to 100. And let's, let's see what happens. Apply. Oh, did a little bit. Okay, cool. Anyway, fun stuff. Auto hole filling and manual hole filling are other options as well. All right, so then I'm gonna go save your scan. I'm just gonna go right into here into my mold scan folder. I'm gonna call this mold scan one. And I can save it as a PLY, SDL, OBJ, 3MF, and ASC entire scan all at the same time if I wanted to. So I'm just gonna hit save. It gives me the original size and the dimensions of the actual part. That is something to note when you're 3D scanning, you're not just getting the shape, you're getting actual precise measurements of everything on that part. Really good for reverse engineering or designing new parts for things. All right, so if I go into that folder now, we've got the 3MF OBJ PLY STL. Go ahead and open that up. And as you can see, here it is in Microsoft 3D Viewer, Paint 3D. Anyway, so you can put this into your scanning or your slicing program or whatever, print it out, uh, and do all sorts of stuff with this. Now, in future videos, we'll be going into the reverse engineering and the tools like Geomagic Essentials to really clean this up and get it spot on, and then turn it into a parametrically modeled full-on CAD design.
So that worked out pretty well, simple, straightforward. Now, we've been seeing a lot of different ways people are using this. For example, if uh, one of client needed to scan mounting points inside of an engine bay, and he just needed to get the mounting points, the distance in between, the angles and everything. And so literally in five minutes, you can scan that and have that data to put into the CAD program and then design your part around it or you know a lot of other different ways to use this let me know in the comments below how you think you could use a scanner in your workflow if you're in a machine shop or if you're in reverse engineering or design or anything like that let me know down below and if you have an idea of something you'd like to see scanned uh, leave that down below too because there's a good chance we'll pick it up and do it anyway we sell all kinds of 3D scanners and 3D printers and materials and high-end engineering grade polymers at visionminer.com. So be sure to check us out if you need something like that. Thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day and I'll see you on the next video.